This is the second step in section three, how do we do biomimicry? Biomimicry is essentially translation. And a critical step in translating is looking at the function and the context. The purpose of this section is to understand how biomimicry bridges design and biology using function and context. Biomimicry is essentially a translation process, translating ideas from nature into design applications. We use the word design here to mean anything that we create or design, whether a product, process, or a team, or an organization. And essentially it's a language translation because different disciplines use different jargon or terminology. The key is to create a bridge between the biological organism or system and the design application. In biomimicry, the bridge is around what the organism and what the design is doing. We call this the verb or the function. The second part of the bridge is the context. What are the operating conditions that the organism or ecosystem is functioning in? And what are the operating conditions that your design is functioning in? And how are these similar? For example, a function is a verb meaning what it is doing. The noun is what its name is. So a cactus and a water bottle have different names, but they're both doing the same thing, which is the function of storing liquids. A firefly and a light bulb are different nouns, but they both do the same function, which is the verb create light. Shark skin and antibacterial soap are two different nouns, but they both do the same function, which is to manage bacteria. So imagine you were given the task of creating a biomimetic air conditioning system for a building. If you would ask, are there any air conditioners in nature, it would be difficult to find one, because air conditioner is a noun. So instead, you ask, what does the air conditioner do? You find its function. It regulates temperature. Then you can ask, is there anything in nature that regulates temperature? And you would find that there are literally thousands of examples of how nature regulates temperature. In order to narrow down and focus your biological research, you need to also define what operating conditions or context your design needs to function within. Context is critical and includes both the local, socio-economic and technological context and in biomimicry design we include the big picture context as well. You want to search for organisms and ecosystems that meet that function in the same operating conditions that your design will be functioning within. When you're designing a building that isn't going to move, the best place to start is to ask the locals. If all the locals are burying underground, then maybe you should do the same with your buildings. If you're building foundations in sand, then look to the organisms that are experts at that. If your building is in a hurricane zone, then look to the palm trees that remain standing after a hurricane. So if your air conditioning system needs to manage the temperature fluctuations in Zimbabwe, then look to the local Zimbabwe organisms that are experts at managing temperature. So our biomimicry inspiration can zoom in onto termite mounds that are able to maintain a stable temperature in Zimbabwe while housing thousands of ants inside. So Zimbabwean architect Mick Pierce figured out how to regulate the temperature of a building by mimicking the way termites regulate the temperature of their mounds. The building is the Eastgate Center in Harare, and it consumes less than 50% of the energy used in conventionally air-conditioned buildings in the area. In biology, a well-adapted biological strategy must meet the functional needs of the organism in the context in which it lives in order to contribute to its success. Therefore, in biomimicry thinking, a well-adapted design strategy must meet the functional needs of the design challenge in the context in which it lives in order to contribute to its success. And that is why identifying function and context is a bridge between biology and design and a critical step in the translation process of biomimicry. One of the purposes of biomimicry is to create designs that are well adapted to context. The same function can be met in different ways or using different strategies in different contexts. For example, the function of being a bird in the desert where there's very scarce resources is met with a completely different strategy than the function of being a bird in the Amazon rainforest where there are an abundance of resources. The function of filtering water when it involves particulates is met with a different strategy than the function of filtering water when it's filled with dissolved salts. Applying biomimicry thinking to human design, the function of providing energy in the context of 20th century economics is going to be met with a different strategy than the function of providing energy in the context of 21st century economics. 
For example, when BP defined itself as a petroleum company, it called itself British Petroleum. But in today's world, they realized they needed to name themselves beyond petroleum and focus on their core function of providing energy. In that way, they can meet the function of providing energy in different ways depending on the changing contexts. This trend is happening in many different industries, as industries realize if they define themselves based on their service or function, they can evolve to fit any context. Rather than carpets, provide covered floors, then you can recycle them. Rather than hotels, provide rooms like Airbnb. Rather than cars, provide mobility like Uber and Zipcars. So applying biomimicry thinking to your business, what's the core function of your company or department? And is your company able to adapt to changing contexts? Using function rather than noun, you can adapt your strategy to meet different contexts and you can also find inspiration from the natural world to innovate using biomimicry. In summary, biomimicry is essentially a translation step or a bridge between biology and design. A critical translation step in biomimicry includes identifying function and context, and this works from biology to design and vice versa.